All right, we're back again. So we've removed the driver's side instrument panel, which has two small harnesses, the left side and right side. And we have removed the all of the switches here from the main on the switch panel. So this is part of the main harness that goes down to the chassis and so you have the two harnesses here and then you have the roof harness that goes around and you also have the bunk harness that's in the back corner of the cab here so now we're going to um, We're going to remove everything from the breaker panel. This thing does not have fuses. It is just these breakers, these pop breakers. And there's two things here. I'm actually not entirely sure what it is. Oh, the ones, uh, I think we'll just remove the harness, which actually isn't that difficult. Basically, these breakers are all daisy chained together with a power wire, and then whatever breaker you want to use for whatever, you just attach that to the so the way these breakers are configured is they have the power running down the outsides and then the two inside screws are set up to be used uh, as your power from to your switch, right? And that gives you kind of a nice center line that you can work on with the screwdriver and so you're never in too tight of a spot, except for uh, here where the daisy chaining doubles up to uh, cross over to this little fella here. So your your power comes in this one here, heavy cable to here, and one's coming off and going to this side. And then one's coming off the top here, going down to this side. It'll be interesting to get this all apart and then uh, trace through all the different wire numbers on the wiring diagram and just kind of get a feel for how the wiring on the truck is done. This is my favorite part of the job, is the fiddle work. I don't particularly like the things like swapping the fenders around or disconnecting the battery or even taking the cab off my favorite part of any project is always the little fiddle stuff I can just kind of sit here and work away and see how they did things and figure stuff out all right Apart from one little switch, at the very bottom row. Beauty.
Yep. Seems like a lot of this dash stuff is a 3 8. There's the hinge, too. We'll get those polished up. different screws on this side so probably six screws along the back of the cowl Should be nine, except it's a Robert's head. So when I, I talk about the manifold, it might not have been that apparent in all the videos, but this is what I'm talking about right here, is this what appears to be an aluminum block about a foot and a half long that has all of the fittings for your junctions going into it and then coming off of it are a couple different valves and mainly hoses. Which is essentially your connection from the firewall to the outside to the inside, if that makes sense. This is the inside of the firewall fittings here. And on the outside, a couple videos ago, videos ago, and I was taking the fittings off. Um, I'm assuming all these correlate, but I won't know until I get a little bit farther into the project. Right here and here are the two wiper motors. Both are driven with air power. There's a line off either end. This is the only heat duct in the entire truck. You will have heat coming out of the bottom of the of the heater core for foot because you do have defroster and floor here. This duct is what takes it from the heater box up to your two vents on the top and this is literally the only heat duct. Apart from like the bunk heater is a completely separate affair but this is it. There's no heat ducts on either side to blow up the side windows. There's nothing. In fact, Peterbilt didn't actually really do that until in 2000. They redesigned the square dash a little bit to uh, help defrost your side windows. But this is a very simple system. This is the plug for the HVAC from your main harness. This line was, is additional, it is for the PTO, and I believe it can be slotted into one of these unused ports in the manifold. I'll have to double check that. 
but we're gonna we're gonna plan on that it can be moved from here over to the manifold because this was a real pain to deal with. This is your harness, which goes not only to your speakers, spotlights, radio, but also it ends up going to the bunk as well. Anyway, that's enough for now. That is how you remove the dash out of a 359. And we'll get on to bigger and better things next time. And we'll deal with the lower half, getting rid of the heater core. So thanks for watching.